All right, back with another Pioneer video. This time we've got a Gruel Burning Tree Emissary deck. Um, I, some people call this the Bushwhacker deck. I don't actually have any Bushwhackers in my deck. Um, my build's a little bit different, so I'll try to go over some stuff. Uh, but the main card I wanted to build around and make as the best it can be is uh, Breakout, which is sort of a once upon a time, but you have to build your deck around it. Um, it's two mana, look at six. Uh, you can put a creature with CMC two or less into play, and then it gets haste. So, um, the, the main reason I think this card is so strong is because anyone that's ever played a Burning Tree Emissary deck knows the more of these you have in your opening hand, uh, the higher your win percentage goes. So, Breakout gives you a way to just see Burning Tree Emissaries more often. Uh, and also, you can just combine it with creatures that don't have haste. Like, I have Voltaic Brawler in my deck, which is a 3-2, gets 2 energy, and then it can get Pulse and Pulse on a Trample by eating energy when it attacks. So, if you have Breakout on turn 2, this is just a 4-power creature on turn 2 that's attacking. So, it's a bunch of damage. Um, I have Paw Patch Recruit in my deck. This card's been really excellent for me. I, I, don't, I don't have much to say other than it's just been incredible. It's a one drop, it's a three drop. Uh, it can be really helpful versus uh, Mayhem Devil. Uh, it has Trample, it's just it's just an incredibly good card. Um, and then there's a bunch of standard stuff. I I guess the other non-standard stuff is I have Zergo Bell Striker in my deck instead of the full four Heartfire Elementals. Uh, this card's just nice versus like Temporary Lockdown. Also, I think it's just like, it's a little bit more consistent than Hearthfire Elemental. Um, it doesn't like this if you play this on turn one you're just so heavily incentivized to keep doing the counters on it so i decided to split the difference here and just see how this felt um obviously cunning coyote just incredible card L alchemist is solid uh, maybe the worst card in this deck in my opinion i don't know if you have to play it um but i, I still think it's good I, it, you just want to get damage um and it's, it's sort of like a haste creature right um, and it also just helps you attack. So uh, happy with all these cards. Mana base isn't too crazy. I do have a Hash Up Oasis and a Besaju that I don't think are standard. Oops. Oh, don't lag. We'll be back. All right. I, I have a Hash Up Oasis and a Besaju that I don't think are standard in this deck. Uh, but I do think the Oasis is good when you have so many tramplers. It's just a free giant growth. And sometimes you flood. Um, and obviously Besaju is good with Inti. Um, and can clear temporary lockdown. So, uh, some Ravnap runes, a Den of the Bugbear, and just a bunch of dual lands. Uh, side deck is... I don't know what the side deck should be, to be honest. I didn't really like my side deck in the games I played. Um, like, these Haywire Mites were mostly for temporary lockdown, but it's also just like a guy you can play off Burning Tree or whatever. Um, but I, they didn't... I played against a bunch of Sacrifice that didn't seem good there. Uh, Red Cat Melee, speaking of Sacrifice, this can answer Mayhem Devil, Fabled Mirror, Breaker Tokens. Uh, it's mostly for Red Mirrors, so if you play against a Mirror Match, it's nice to have. It does a lot of damage, so you don't have to necessarily worry about Monstrous Rage, like getting your Shock or whatever. Um, that's another thing about my main deck. I, I don't really have interaction. It's just dudes. It's just creatures and beatdown. Um, yeah, and some, some safekeepings, again, for the aggro matchups. Um... So Mage Main Lizards for combo. Uh, and Phoenix, Crawl Harpooner. Uh, the Slickshot Show-Off decks have been pretty popular, so it's nice if they use all their mana, you can just eat the Slickshot Show-Off for free. The same is true for Ledger Shredder. Um, this card just has a fine body, but the upside of those things uh, made me want to try it. Uh, and then some Case of the Crimson Pulse uh, versus just any sort of grindy matchup. So, let's get into the games. You know, more Pioneer, more Suffering. <laughs> but we're trying out here. I'm trying to make some content, at least. Hopefully people enjoy it. Uh, on the draw, I think I think we win the last die roll, but lose the first four. It could be wrong. But on the draw against Blue Red Phoenix, uh, I think this hand's a keep. I don't know what my opponent's playing, but... Fortunately, pick up a Burning Tree Emissary. So, uh, th this is, uh, I guess, an example of comparing Hearthfire Hero to Zergo, where if I play the hero, I'm pretty incentivized to, like, use NT and discard and grow it. But the Zergo, it sort of frees up my options, and it still gives me 
decent power on the battlefield. So they kill the one drop after I tag it with Burning Tree. Play Voltaic Brawler. Um, they play like a Proft and some Cantrips, which is the best possible for me. I beat them up. They play a Ledger Shredder. I beat them up. Play an Inti, grow my mouse. And at this point, I, I, I'm fairly confident that I can't lose. And they scoop. So easy game one. Um, and I believe I just put in... Do I put in everything? I'm not sure. I don't think... I boarded in safe keepings, I think, in this match. I don't think it was correct. I do think the Harpooners and the Mage Man Legends are great. Uh, the case, maybe not. I'm not really sure. It's really difficult to sideboard with this deck. Um... I don't, I, I don't know, I, I'm not super used to playing with it. I'm not really used to playing with these decks um, all too often. I don't really like playing 20 land decks, that's not my thing. So maybe I erred too much on the side of uh, like being mid rangey instead of just going for broke. I uh, take out a Voltaic Brawler and all my Inties, my Monster of Rages, just because they have so much cheap removal. Um, and I do not put in the safekeepings, which, okay, I agree with my past self. So this hand looks really spicy. I'm praying that they have a Ledger Shredder. I have a one drop. I have a bunch of hasters. Uh, and then they play Thing in the Ice. And obviously, I'm just dead. <laughs> so not much I could do here. Um, I didn't. I think Thing in the Ice is increased in popularity. I, I would not recommend playing an aggro deck in Pioneer at the moment. Every single opponent I played in this league... Except for, I think, one, it, it just felt like they were so ready for aggro decks. So, it, it, I, I can't really say I would recommend it. Like, if you really want to play aggro decks, they seem to be pretty popular. But uh, it seems like everyone is trying to beat them. So, right now I'm looking at my side deck, trying to decide if I want red cap melee to be able to deal with Thing in the Ice. But, just waiting on my opponent. Uh, this game's pretty, I guess it's kind of exciting at a certain point, but... Um, thing in the ice bounces everything. I plot a coyote. Um, they decided not to attack. I think they would have died if they attacked. So I have one coyote plotted, one in my hand. I have the board a little bit full. They have a picklock prancer. They play ancestral recall. Thank God that card didn't get banned. Well done. Um, play lands. Play brotherhoods and clear the board. Um, and then I'm trying to figure out if I can kill them. I believe they go to one. I just think I just play everything, give it haste. Bash them, they block, they go to one. Or maybe this is when they go to two. Okay, so there are two. I have a 2-2 two -two haster coming in, a Den of the Bugbear coming in. Uh, they can't kill me because they don't have the hull active yet. Or at least like, they, can't, yeah, they, they can't use the hull to attack me. So, they have a million cards because of Treasure Cruise, but I'm like, maybe this game's winnable. Obviously, it's not because they played Ancestral Recall, but uh, we hope. So, they're the second Brothers, and typically these decks have two. You know, they've looked at 23 cards or whatever, and uh, yeah, that sucks. So, I think we get them down to one. I'm hoping to draw Kumama faces Kakazan. I'm hoping to draw... Um, the desert that deals two damage. I draw a breakout. I play it. Uh, and then I think that's the game. So here I'm thinking about these red cap melees. Thinking about safekeeping. Trying to figure out what I should do. I still don't really know how I should be boarding. So I go I go for one melee, leave in the cases, and just kind of cross my fingers that I have a good hand on, on the play. I keep this hand. This hand is kind of awkward, to be honest. I don't think it's a mulligan. I have two Bagebane Lizards, um, but you'll see the game. It, it's pretty unfortunate. Um, if I just draw third land, I, I think it would have been a little bit easier for me, but they have Thing in the Ice again on two after killing my one drop, and then we play our, our Bane Lizards. Uh, if I could just get the Kamano down and do extra damage, that would have been nice. And I think there's a, f a few later turns where I could just like draw a land and actually pressure them enough. Um, but they flip the thing in the ice, we get them to one, and then we just can't kill them. We just break on all our draw steps and never draw third land. So, frustrating, but, uh, what can you do? I'm playing 20 lands. Unlucky. They double Brotherhood's ended me. And the second game is what it is. Uh, yeah. Oops. Okay, yeah, we get them to one, play a Coyote, whatever. They 
removal spell, removal spell, get back me because it's killed me. So that's the first match. Uh, you know, unfortunate. Not much to say. I don't know if that matchup's good or bad. I I think most of the time we're supposed to win that game. But uh, we just bricked off a lot, and uh, they had the stuff at the right time. So, GG's. Okay, we are on the draw again. Um, against an opponent who plays turn one called and familiar into fatal push oven. So, you know, like <laughs> I'm playing aggro. This happens. I'm kind of saying to myself, well, I'm, I'm probably dead. The, the game is probably ended. I, I will do my best, but uh, we'll see what happens. So I have tramplers. They have this cat oven stuff. They play another removal spell. I beat them up. Um... They play Claim the Firstborn, eat my guy. Like, okay, sure. Keep doing the cat oven stuff, blocking. Uh, I don't really know why they blocked here because it's a trample, but whatever. More hasters, just trying my best to kill them. And they have another Claim the Firstborn. So this is where I'm like, oh shit, okay, you just can't, you can't play aggro decks. Because this is game one, my opponent has two Claim the Firstborns. So... Right, like all of these sack decks people are playing, um, they probably have four fatal push and three claim the firstborn. So if they have a sack outlet, they have like seven one minute removal spells. Um, and claim is obviously really bad for you because it does a chunk of damage um, and whatnot. So, um, so I attack. I'm looking at this board. I'm like, okay. I just need them to not somehow kill me. Um, I guess they can claim here that deals three. This is one. Another oven's another one. So if their hand's like Cauldron Familiar claim or something, maybe they can kill me. Uh, but I think they just have nothing, and we end up winning this game. Um, but you'll you'll see the next game. <laughs> uh, board in case. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about all the same stuff. Um, I'm thinking about red cap melee case safekeeping. I think I just end up doing this. Haywire and mighty haywire mighty in the oven. I, I feel like it doesn't matter that much because they're just gonna like eager me or whatever. Um, take out some monsters rage because I know they're gonna have a bunch of removal. And so I am on the draw because I somehow won that game. And they have cat oven oven. Okay, well, similar to the last game, I'm like, well, I'm just dead. But I won that last game after thinking that I was probably out of it. Um, my, my creature sort of just did the trample thing, and I, eventually I got there. They didn't keep casting removal spells. They didn't have, like, a mayhem devil. They didn't have a big creature. But still, yeah. I, I'm pessimistic about my, my chances, but I have a little bit of hope from the last game. Um but yeah, they're, they're doing the cat oven stuff. Now they have this class that's going to make more foods. Doing my best to do as much damage as I can. There's a fatal push. And there's a mayhem devil. Disgusting card. One of the worst designed magic cards I've ever seen in my life. I hate this card so fucking much. And uh, there it is. So red cat melee. Sure. Great. Killed it. Whatever. Kills my board, obviously. Um... You know, I've just got some shitters. I think I play them, and I'm like, why am I here? They're just dealing two. Or they're, they're dealing three a turn and gaining two extra life. There's just, like, n no way I can interact with any of this stuff. So I decide that the cases are nonsense. I, I think they can just kill me so quickly that it doesn't really matter that I'm drawing cards. So put the Monster Rage back in to help. Or, excuse me, I, I put an Inti. So at this point, I'm thinking I, I need Trample. I want stuff that's good against Cold and Familiar, so I put the Intis back in. And now we're on the play for game three with, uh, I think this is a mulligan, uh, with a solid hand. Uh, I can't complain about it. I've turned one Kumano. Um, I could, I, th I think I'm thinking about it when I'm mulliganing if I want to go hero into Inti, but I'm low on resources, so I don't just want to chuck a card to get 1-1 one -one counters. I decided I'm just going to play this, and then I can play my 2-1 drops. So what we do, they have Cat Oven Case again. I, I think all of my opponents that played this deck just had Cat Oven. and <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of annoying. This combination of things doesn't really bother me. Like, there's so many good trample options. But Mayhem Devil is the one that just tilts me into oblivion. Like, it, it's such a stupid card. <laughs> uh, it's so awful. It's really funny when you consider how, like, disgustingly 
designed Mayhem Devil is. And then the fact that there's like they've never put in a card that's even close, right? Like you could make a Mayhem Devil. The 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 worst thing about Mayhem Devil, and it's not close, such a horrendous design decision is that if your opponent sacrifices stuff, you can start pinging their creatures. I have no idea why that's a thing. Like I, I played a green black sacrifice deck earlier, and it's just like you play the mirror and they just play a Mayhem Devil and you die. But like you you regardless of what Mayhem Devil is, it can go face, it triggers off your opponent's stuff. It's it's got a pretty big body, it's a three three. Um, like there, there hasn't been a single creature. I, I, as far as I know, they've printed that can just like ping other creatures for one. Like you could have Mayhem Devil say when the player that controls it sacrifices a creature. They haven't even printed a card like that where you just have a creature that when you sacrifice creatures, you can deal one of your opponent's creatures. Like not even one that can't go face. Like that, that card is just so filthy. Um, so we've got a big board. I'm like hell yeah, maybe I can win. Please don't. Okay, and I die. <laughs> so now this this is basically gonna block. It's gonna shoot stuff. Uh, they can hold priority and sack extra times. Um, so we have the paw patch. That's gonna grow this thing. That's neat. We keep growing it. I'm like, okay, maybe I get them with this. I alpha grow this again. They take a bunch of damage. Get back to Cauldron Familiar. Uh, I think they... I guess that's not this turn, so that's later. Sorry. No, of course. Okay, so yeah. We're pinging stuff. Yeah, yeah, my board goes away. They block. They're at six. I have this big thing, and I'm hoping to draw a Trampler or whatever. Um, this is their turn four, by the way. I think this is lethal. So, yeah, I'm dead. So, I die here. <laughs> they kill me on turn four after destroying all of my creatures. It's so funny, dude. It's just so hilarious. Um, but what can you do? So, they get to double ping me here and then hold priority on the first Cauldron Familiar and then double ping me. So, GG's. Um, all right. Another match. <laughs> this match is funny. The, 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 the games I win are... <laughs> kind of pathetic but what can you do so we're on the draw it's the mirror we all do the exact same thing except for i, I don't think i do what they do because it's very bad defensively and i decide that i need to block if i want to win so we, we have identical draws but i lost the die rules so you know tough beats i play blockers i do blocking they have a darker's command uh, i play blockers uh, i play with fire in my face i die okay cool should have won the die roll. Giant idiot. Put in safekeeping. Put in case. Um, I think if if this was a more traditional... I don't know if I put in both cases. So red cap's coming for sure. Safekeeping's coming for sure. I think I put in one case. Because I'm saying to myself, like, I, I'm i not sure that it's great. This is, like, we're, we're kind of just comboing each other. We're just adding a bunch of creatures into play. Yes, they have four play with fires and maybe some other sideboard cards. But I don't think case is, like, excellent. Trying to figure out what I want to board it out. But I, I think I just end up going with one case. Yeah. And then I take out two entities and all the worlds or the all the monstrous rages since I'm on the draw. You can reassess when you're on the play, but uh yeah. Okay, we gotta go first this time. We've got Kumano. Um just send it. They've got turn one mouse. Um I think a little bit about playing Breakout because I can hit Burning Tree, but it, it, the creature you hit off Breakout doesn't trigger Kamana, so you have to hit Burning Tree if you don't want to miss on the counter. And a 4-3 is going to be decent here. Um, can't get play with Fire, and I can just block whatever they do. So I decide that's good enough. They Swift Spear attack. I block. They have Monstrous Rage. That's fine. My guy's 4 power. So it's going to go to 4 Toughness. I'll take some damage. Not a big deal. We get a 2 for 1, and love to see that. So, play Breakout, hit Burning Tree, play Brawler, play Patchwork Recruit. I have the board, I have some pressure, like my spot. Um, they just had Giganta here. I was going to say, what do they do their, with their mana? Uh, attack them down to five. Same spot, I have a Desert now for extra damage. So, maybe they don't count for this when they block, they go to two it, I can kill them. They have a coyote. Uh, 
And yeah, they die. So on the draw in game three, trying to figure out how I want to board. I think I just run it back. I don't think much changes. Um, and I don't have that many great options. So this hand is excellent. Um, drawing multiple red cat melees is basically exactly where I want, where I want to be. Um, the way their draw ends up, these aren't actually great. I don't think I get a ton of value from them, but still it helps. Um, and I just get to clear the board. So they have Swift Spear. I end up taking the hit. They just play another one drop and I clear it. And then same thing happens. I play my Kumano to set up counter on Brawler. Swift Spear again. Um, and then they Bushwhacker, and I kill one of the Swift Spears, because I think a Prowess 1-2 is better than a 2-1. Take my damage, and then we draw, play Brawler. Um, I think a little bit about Breakout again to hit Burning Tree, but it's just too greedy if I miss. So, so They play a tap land here, um, and then from this spot I'm thinking, okay, that's weird to do that first. Um... And they just end up having nothing. They don't even want to bluff attack. I'm always blocking here, so. Um, and from this point, I think they just kind of flood. Um, play the breakout. Get up. I believe I take Paw Patch here. Maybe I take Burning Tree, actually. Okay, yeah. So I take Paw Patch. A little bit of insulation if they draw removal. And then just do some beating down while having blockers so I don't take too much damage and randomly die to whatever stuff they might have in their hand. Um, draw another breakout. Breakout hits. Coyote play the Aloe Alchemist. I think I plotted earlier. And that should be the game. So yeah, the, our opponent just on the play crushes us with like a mirror hand and then in game three they kind of do nothing right like we had double red cat melee but what they played three one drops and a bushwhacker i, I assume their other two cards were lands or one of them is jagantha uh or no i'm sorry it's not jagantha right the burning trim sir whatever they used mana one turn and i think i thought they had a jagantha but yeah even if they block we still have the board it's not like their deck can come back um, all right so this is yeah fourth match on the draw think a little bit about this hand just because it has burning tree and kumana like that's like your best starts mulligan to a fine mediocre bad whatever you want to call it hand um and my opponent i think mulligan to four maybe five so I don't notice this right away, but after they stop doing stuff, I'm like, oh shit, they don't have very many cards. So we have Kamano, we rip Burning Tree, which is nice. Um, I decided to just play the Paw Patch so I can use the Alchemist for plotting. They play, they plotted this on turn two, sorry, the 4-2 that draws cards, and then they play a troll. So I'm kind of thinking, well, they mulliganed a lot, but this is a decent way to be back in the game. Maybe they find a 5-drop or something. They have a Pawn Profit. And uh, we draw Monster Traits, which is another really good draw. So I decide to buff the Burning Tree and just attack. And they make a, a block that doesn't really make any sense. Um, I assume, so they forgot my Kamano exiles creatures that take damage. They just chump with the troll. But they think about a double block and then they just decide to chump. Um... I guess to play around monster rage, but the, their just, guy just dies for free. So th they want to put the the troll on a forest and then sack it and draw a card, but this ends up costing them because I got to deal a point of damage and just ate their guy. So another really good draw step. Really fortunate in this game. Opponent mulliganed a lot, and then we had incredible draw steps. So what looked like a, a rough start ends up being good for me. Um, a bunch of damage. Attack. I think they say no block, and I go, okay, well, I have Oasis. I'm going to put a trample counter on my Burning Tree Emissary and have a bunch of stuff in play. And uh, you have to kill me. And obviously they do not do that. So I don't board it. I don't have any cards for Mono Green. I don't have any ways to kill Elf except for Red Cat Melee, which 
stone rains me, so obviously we don't do that. And opponent mulligans to four again. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm mulligan to six. Have a Kumano. And this is kind of the same spot where, like, they have Elf in two or three, and I'm thinking, well, they mulliganed a lot, but they could just get out of this. Uh, breakout, hoping to hit Burning Tree, just hit a Paw Patch, which is maybe the worst possible because their deck doesn't have interaction. Uh, they play a 4 2, draw a card. I'm like, oh god. Anything they draw is just going to farm me. They have Nick those. Um, come on, flips. And I have the Allo Alchemist and a, a Monstrous Rage, so I think I just go after the Kiora. And so no matter what Kiora's dying, because this is 5 power, they decide they want to try to trade for my 2 on, and I just Monstrous Rage to save it and get some damage. I think it's a fine play. So they're Hellbent. They have 4 mana. Uh, if they attack me for 5, I guess they don't want to do any blocking. They value their creatures higher. We get a Burning Tree Emissary, play an NT, attack with our stuff, grow our Trampler. Um, and I think they just die. So yeah, this is a pretty pathetic game. Let me just mold to four twice. Really unlucky for them. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if they just had a fifth card, like any random fifth card, they probably could have won that match. All right, so final match. Uh, I am on the play. Yippee. We finally get one on the play. Love to see that with our deck. See an opening hand that is pretty solid. I, It's not perfect. I, I would rather have breakouts and burning tramissaries, but I'm not going to complain about this on the play. We have Kamano into two drops. One's an Inti, so I can filter out my hand if it sucks. And they, <laughs> they go Black Leaf Cliffs, pass. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So draw breakout. Um, and yeah, another... Many, many spots where I have to think about what I want to do here. Um, I think since I think they have Fatal Push, it's so likely they have Fatal Push, I decide to break out and hope to hit Burning Tremissary. I'm not losing that much value by missing out on the counter. Um, so I decide I'm just going to do this, uh, and then it makes it a little bit awkward for them. So make our mana, play a Brawler, attack. Uh, they just kill the Burning Tremissary. And then they play an oven and they play a claim. So, like I've already said, um, I think maybe I got this game confused with the other game where I thought I lost game one. But it, it's very difficult to just try to beat people down when they're just playing Fatal Push to claim the firstborn in their Witches Oven deck. Obviously, they have to have the sack outlet. Like, my opponent's kind. I'm not going to say they had a nuts, but they had good draws. Um, but if they do have their good draws, which is not unreasonable for them to have these types of draws, it's just so hard to beat people down. They just have so many, like, Swords of Plowshares, and you're just trying to get them. It doesn't really work. So I use Inti. Hope to hit a land. Brick. I, I don't know if I actually cast a spell off of Inti this game, or this this league. Which, or ca play a land even. I Maybe I play one land, but I think we just Brick almost every time. So they have a Harvester. I'm doing my best to beat them down, but uh, there's Cat Oven. Yeah, so now they have double oven cat, two one mana removal spells, a million food tokens. They're twelve. Um, and then yeah, we we hit we had a two mana spell, but we had to use our green to besage you an oven, so we miss on the breakout too. So unfortunate, a little bit of an unfortunate league. Uh, the deck felt fine though. I, I think it was pretty smooth. Um, just like lost some games with an aggro deck that aggro decks are supposed to lose, I think. Just opponents that have life gain and one mana removal. What are you going to do? Uh, they play a Negra, and I'm just off of it. I think I just don't board here. They decide I'm going to try just this configuration. Mulligan to a great six. This is exactly what I want. Um, but there's bad news coming up, <laughs> which is, of course, or maybe that's not this game. Okay, yeah, it is this game. So the bad news is they go Black Leaf Cliffs pass again. So they have Fatal Push on turn one like they did in game one. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm not killing them. We'll do our best. But here's a Burning Tree. Um, 
My my start is so good. It's crazy how good my start is, but it just doesn't matter. Um, so I have to tank on this. I believe I draw the conclusion Paw Patch is the play, um, and I think it's correct. You'll see why, but none of it ends up mattering. So the Paw Patch gets haste. I attack. I have this 3-3. Three, three. If they want to kill the 3-3, three, three, uh, we get in for 2, and then we have a 3-2 Trampler. Um, and none of it matters because <laughs> they just have all 1-man removal, so... Attack, they kill the paw patch, the burning tree grows. They play claim the first more they play oven. So like not really anything I can do. I it just is what it is. I'm playing an aggro deck. They have these types of cards. Uh we just die. No big deal. Um I decide here the final note, I decide I decide here that um I don't want to just play this Kimono. I want power. I want stats. I'm way too behind. So I decide I'm going to attack and just hope that this land spins into no to another land and I get a 1-1 counter and I can just use my mana. Obviously, we brick. I don't think it matters. Like, whatever. Unlucky. But also, <laughs> I think we were just dead. Opponent has all these food tokens and a million life. Um, so that's the last match. Um, so, yeah, I, I haven't played the other versions. Uh, the other versions look kind of bad to me, which is part of why I built the, this deck the way I did. It just looked like if you draw the right wrong pieces together, your deck doesn't really flow. This configuration, I think you don't really have to worry about that. Like, all of, all of your hands that are just, like, spells are going to be good. Um, there's not too many cards that are awkward. Like, if I just have, like, two play with fires and a bushwhacker, stuff like that can be awkward. Um, also, just prowess creatures with bushwhackers kind of silly so i like this build um but i don't like if, if everyone's main deck can claim the firstborns and, and their deck has fatal push mayhem devil claim the firstborn probably not exactly where you want to be but i do i do think that the paul patch recruit is really good tech versus that's those style of things um and this is a card i'm gonna keep an eye on going forward i, I just think it's super strong it's super versatile um it's just an incredible card so Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, I don't know how you fix the sideboard. I, I don't actually think you can change your sideboard to beat Sack. I think you'll just die to it until the format corrects in a way in which, like, maybe everyone just starts playing control because people have a bunch of fatal pushes and claim the firstborns. And then maybe that deck gets pushed out or something. But it, it, it's not a surprise that after the bans they decided to make the, the decks everyone's playing are just Phoenix and Sack. I think Sacrifice is the best Fable the Mirror Breaker deck, and Phoenix is the best Treasure Cruise deck. So, there you go. It is what it is. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you for the next one.